It's really interesting to me that we talk about goals. We talk about where we want to go. We talk about how we're going to get there. How many times do we talk about where we are? And you may say, Amber, this is ridiculous because I know where I am. I'm right here. And it makes logical sense. Like, here I am. But do you really know where you're at? Do you really know where you're starting? Have you really taken the time to have that honest conversation with yourself? My name is Amber Furman, and this is the More Than Corporate Podcast. Welcome to the More Than Corporate Podcast. I'm Amber Furman, recovering perfectionist and serial accomplisher. If you're anything like I used to be, you've been living your life thinking that if you accomplish enough stuff, you'll finally find the success you've always wanted. But what if it's not about accomplishing more stuff? What if it's about accomplishing the right stuff? I believe you don't find success. You create it by intentionally designing the life you want and having the courage to get out of your comfort zone to live your design. I went from doing what I was supposed to do to doing what I love to do. And now I get to help others do the same. Keep listening as I chat with inspiring people who make it their mission to live their best life every day and learn how you too can live the life you've always wanted. Really quickly, before we jump into this, this episode is brought to you by Success Development Solutions. Success doesn't happen by accident. It happens by intentionally planning your day. It happens by defining success for yourself. It happens by building a blueprint to the life that you've always wanted to have, giving yourself the freedom to adjust and pivot, surrounding yourself with the tools, resources, and people who can help you accomplish the blueprint that you have created. It also comes from getting out of your comfort zone and being willing to have those tough moments and tough conversations that need to be had in order to accomplish what you want to accomplish. If you chase success, like it's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, you will catch success just as much as you catch that pot of gold. It doesn't exist. If you're ready to really build the life that you've always wanted, if you are ready to take control of your future, if you are ready to build the blueprint to an amazing life that you can be proud of, we start with the draft your day challenge. It is a five day productivity masterclass that helps you get clear on how you think and what resources you need to build a day that will support the month, and the blueprint going forward. If this is something that you're interested in, head over to draftyourday.successdevelopmentsolutions.com and go ahead and get signed up for that. I promise you will be glad you did. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this topic. So we're talking about where you are. And like I said in the intro, it's so easy to say, Amber, I'm right here, right? I'm standing right here in front of you. I know where I am. And it's physically, you may know where you are, but do you know where you are mentally? Do you know where you are emotionally? Have you taken the time to really get honest with yourself? I've mentioned to you in other episodes that we are the easiest people to lie to is ourselves because our brain is amazing at believing what we tell it. Case in point, how many times have you gotten to the end of the day and you've said, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I was so busy today. And then somebody says to you, that's amazing that you were busy. What did you get done? Crickets, right? I don't know what I got done. And I felt like I talked to so many people and I felt like I did so many things and yet I don't have anything to show for it. Yet we were so busy and we'll continue to tell ourselves that we're so busy until we take control and responsibility for finding out exactly what it is that we do with our day, that we do with our time and that we do with our resources. The same thing applies to not only your time, but also your personal life, also your health. Every area of your life, it's so easy to say, I know where I am right now. I'm an amazing partner. I'm an amazing spouse. Are you though? And and who's judging that, right? If we don't take the time to have these conversations, then how do we actually know where we're starting? And if we're the only one involved in the conversation, then how do we know whether it's honest or not? Because of course, we all think we're we're the smartest you know, person when it's just us in the room, right? So here's a couple of exercises that will help you out. And I'm going to preface this by saying that they will change your life. 
and you will you won't like them. I'm sorry. They they I I was trying to find a better way to say this, and there's just not one. They're awful. Um, but I promise that if you embrace them, if you embrace the suck that they will change your life. So the first thing that I would suggest is get really curious how the people around you see you. I remember reading a book. It was actually Miracle Morning was the first time that I heard it, but I've heard this a couple of times since where somebody sent a letter to the people in different areas of their life, coworkers, spiritual leaders, children, spouses, parents, and said, hey, this is how I think I'm showing up. I would love to know your feedback. How do you think I'm showing up? And then wait for a feedback and be willing to accept that feedback. The first thing that ever happens when we get feedback is we are inclined to go into that place of ego. We're inclined to go into that place where I don't do that, right? Um, How dare you say something about that? like that to me. How dare you tell me this? I was always told that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Why would you say this to me? Remember, if you get that response, first of all, you asked. And second of all, this is the only way you can improve, right? We can wear blinders and we can pretend that we are something that we're not, but really we are what other people perceive us to be. And here's what I mean by that. What our reputation is not what we think it is. Our reputation is what other people think it is. So we can think we have a certain reputation. We can think we have a certain brand. We can think we say a certain message. Who decides that are the people receiving those things? What do they think? How do you show up really? Taking this feedback and being able to really think about what you've gotten back and how you want to implement changes in your life to be different than what you currently are based upon your feedback. Now, keep in mind, you're only offering, excuse me, you're only asking for feedback from people of which you value your opinion. And I want to make that very clear. I'm not telling you to go down the street and say, hey, every Joe Schmo, tell me how I show up, right? But the people that you value, the people whose opinion is important to you, what do they really think of you? And it's really important when you ask this, that you encourage them to be completely brutally honest with you, that you let them know, I know that you love me either way. Please be honest with me. And what will normally happen is you'll get a bunch of really, really good things about you. And then maybe you'll get this one area that you didn't realize was happening the way that it was happening that you get to say, oh my gosh, do I really show up that way? And then you get to decide whether or not you want to change it. Maybe that thing is a way that is part of who you believe yourself to be and you're not willing to change it. And if that's the case, then embrace that and know that you're not for everybody and understand that that's the way that you're showing up. I'm not saying this exercise should be used for the purpose of changing who you are. I'm saying this exercise should be used for the purpose of finding out where you currently are in areas where you wish to improve your life. Where do you wish to be better? And honestly, the answer to that question should be everywhere, right? None of us are as good as we want to be. None of us are as good as we can be. We can always improve and we should always be wanting to. I also want to take a minute to step back and talk about the nice versus kind, because so many times we say, oh my gosh, I can't tell somebody this because I was always told if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And while that is true, I think that statement should be changed to if you can't say anything kind, don't say anything at all. I did a podcast interview that was absolutely amazing where this guest informed me or brought to light for me the difference between nice and kind. And it blew my mind. She said, the kind thing is not always the nice thing, right? We can go around being nice on the surface to everybody, but the kind thing is the thing that people need to hear that they don't, that's uncomfortable, that they don't want to hear, that people don't always want to say, especially in a workplace. How many managers, you know, avoid having these conversations? Maybe somebody's on their phone in an office meeting or they're always late or they're not um, holding up certain responsibilities they need to hold up. And instead of having those conversations in a way that say, 
I want to make sure that you can get better. I want to make sure you know you're showing up this way so that you can make the changes. Maybe they don't know. Nobody's ever told them because it's not nice, right? So be kind to yourself and be kind to others. When you get this feedback, know that it comes from a place of love, that it comes from a place of intending to help you understand the ways that you're showing up so you know where you're starting. Once you know where you're starting, then you can decide where you want to go with setting goals. When you think about, let's move into the relationship aspect. When you think about, I want to be the best spouse that I can be. I want to be the best wife. I want to be the best husband. I want to be the best partner. That's amazing to want to be. How do you know what you need to do in order to accomplish that if you don't already know what you're doing well and what you can improve on? And the only way for you to know those things is to get real with yourself. And I mean real, not sugar-coated real, but like real, real, like two by four, you guys have heard me say that before, the universe will give you a sign and then gives you a nudge and then it gives you a push and then it gives you a two by four, right? Two by four tough with yourself. Two by four kind to yourself. The people that accomplish what they want to accomplish, the people who reach the heights that they want to in their personal, professional, and romantic relationships reach that because they are willing to have these conversations with themselves. I was recently reading a book, The Road Less Stupid, which is a fantastic business book. And this is where I really started thinking about this. How do you put in, you know, if you wanted to drive somewhere and you were putting in an address in a GPS, what's the first thing it asks you? Or maybe not the first thing, but a thing that it asks you is where are you starting? So you make your goals, you make your plans, you make your vision for the future. But where are you starting? Answer that question and you will truly start to be able to design the life that you love. And always remember that you have the ability to design a life that you are proud of, a life that you love, a life that you wake up excited to live. Your best life. And you owe it to yourself to be able to get out of your comfort zone and live it. Thank you guys so much for listening. I really hope that you take this exercise to heart because I promise it will change your life. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the More Than Corporate Podcast. If anything that was said during this episode resonated with you or provided value in any way, it would mean the world to me if you would head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review for the More Than Corporate Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I'm really looking forward to connecting with you. If you'd also like to connect, I've created a Facebook group that is full of amazing people who also make it their mission to live their best life every single day. If that's that sounds like something that you're interested in. The name of that Facebook group is Success Center. Head over there, request to join, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.